Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel and to a new series regarding server-side Swift using Vapor. In this series, we're going to learn how to operate CRUD on our database. So create, read, update and delete data. For example, we have an idea machine that we will build by the end of this series uh, that allows us to actually read data, right? When we refresh, we are reading data from the database. Uh, which are ideas, and then we have another idea and say, well, Digivice, iOS app, let's go for that. Cre oh, of course, Digivice, and then we want to uh, autocomplete, uh, create it, and then we created a new data set, and we are able to actually edit it as well and say, hmm, I forgot about Android. Save it, we've updated it, and then also we are able to delete all of that. Refresh, and that is what we are going to build, and let's start and dive, dive right into it by swiping over here and letting, letting you know that we have to swipe one more time uh, because there are two possibilities how to create new projects in Vapor. You can uh, base your project on the API template by just typing in uh, Vapor new idea machine. It will be based on the API template and um, what API template provides you is actually already a configuration for SQLite, an SQLite database, but it, it will not come with the leave configuration to serve leave template files. Then there's another template, the web template. This one does not come with the SQLite database configuration, but it comes with the leave configuration to serve leave template files. And so that is the difference be between them both. And we will start off our project with the web template because we've learned how to configure leave already. And we don't want to do that over again. You can learn how to do it if you haven't uh, yet. In the description, there's a link to the former series um, explaining that. And so what we have to do is when we are um, executing that command, we have to also supply template equal web. That's it. So we're creating a new project based on the web template. We go inside and then we say vapor update slash uh, dash y. Okay, so this one will generate our project. It will also fetch all dependencies that are defined in package.swift inside uh, our project and it will uh, open up Xcode. So the first thing we want to do in Xcode is actually add another dependency because again the web template does not provide the SQLite uh, database configuration and also does not provide the dependency Fluent SQLite that we are going to use in order to configure the database. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we will swipe over or move over here so it opens up Xcode over here. Uh, so the first one, first thing we want to do is actually edit our package.swift file and add the dependency that we just talked about. All right, so it's done and it opened Xcode. Let's just right away select the right scheme because it has to be run and it has to be the Mac. All right, uh, let's close the right side and we go here and see already leave as has a dependency already included in a package.swift file. We see indeed vapor and leave. Let's remove the comments to have it a little bit more slimmer. And what we want to do is add a new dependency and we can go to actually GitHub and slash vapor. And if you go here, you can actually search for the SQLite, right? Fluent SQLite repository. And we are going to copy that URL and check out the tags to see which version we want to uh, start from fetching. Uh, the dependency. So it's 3.0 and basically we are saying, okay, package URL is what we just copied. Oh, don't forget the colon like I did uh, from colon 3.0.0. And then also we have to add the dependency to our project app target. And we do that by calling it out by its name, SQLite. How do I know the name? How do I know that, that name? Uh, because that one is different from the dependency repository name. So if you go into the repository of the dependency, you will see inside its own package.swift file a library name, and this will tell you what name to use. Yes, this one says driver. Don't get confused, we are on the master branch. We actually use the 3.0 tag, or we are using that one, right? If you click on that, you'll see it has the name Fluent SQL Lite. So that's what we are, what we are using to add it as a target to our app. And so that's all we need. Now I'm hitting save 10 times because I want to make sure Xcode really saves it. And then I want to quit Xcode because um, Xcode actually behaves weird when you are regenerating your Xcode project while it's still open. And that's what we are just about to do. So let's close Xcode or quit it 
and then go in here and then say vapor update again because we have added a new dependency it will be recognized and it will be fetched in and then based on the new stack of dependencies our export project gets generated and opened up again all right so here we go and we will see already that um, aside from leaf as a dependency we also see fluent sqlite now so the first thing we want to do is uh, inside configure we want to configure our database uh, leaf is configured for us already leaf provider and uh, as a re view renderer but we will import fluent sqlite because that one is not configured yet so the first thing we want to do is add the provider oh no the first thing we want to do is fix the indention <laughs> because I indent with two spaces. The second thing is to add the provider. Uh, so services, services dot register, and then fluent SQLite provider, an instance of it. That is that. And now to the configuration of the database. So let's make a comment and say database. And we are going to create a database instance. SQL, let's call it SQLite and have SQLite database instance done. Now let's make our project aware of that database and configure it. All right, this is throwing. So let's do it like that. Oh, I missed one thing. We have to also define uh, what kind of. Is it file-based or memory-based? So we can either say, okay, file-based, here's the path where to store the file that includes our whole database with all its table and data or memory. And then it will just be in our RAM and um, everything is stored there. That also means when we rerun the project, everything in, in our database gets wiped and it's empty again um, for the in-memory database, which is fine for this tutorial. But for example, for production apps, you don't want to like restart your project because you have implemented some new feature and all your data is uh, all your data is gone, right? Uh, but for this one, it just uh, fits our needs, and we are going to now configure our project, which is. Um, as simple as three lines of code. So we are saying databases as a variable and then have an instance of databases config and we're just adding our database to it. So database as an identifier. So we are adding our SQL database and the identifier is SQLite. And then we're just making our project aware of it by registering to our services the databases, right, instance. So that's it. Now, when we run the project again, let's make it more beautiful like that. When we run it, it will still compile and it will still work because everything is just, <laughs> it's just correctly implemented, but we don't have a table yet in our database. Uh, and so let's, let's create our first table, uh, which is our idea table, which will have an ID and a description, right? Because our ID or idea, should be able to have, hold a description of the idea. Uh, self-explanatory, self-explanatory, explanatory, self-explaining. Self self anyway, creating a new group here, calling it models to put all our models inside of it. And then let's, we will see an error because models cannot, our new group cannot be named to models. And that is because if you go to the web template, you can see inside sources app that there are already directories called models and controllers. Just the thing is that they are empty and once they are empty, Xcode will not detect them and or actually not show them. Uh, so what I like to do is just removing inside sources app. I like to remove the models and the controllers like that. If we list now in sources app everything, we only see our new group app boot configure and roots. And so let's cr let's rename our new group to models like that. Now it works. And if we list it again, we see, oh, it's not a new group anymore. It's models. So it just works now. We are creating a new file and call it idea. Oh, it's a Swift file. And that one gets the name idea. Whoops, I called it ideas. What am I doing? Idea. And we are importing fluent SQLite like that the final define a final class called idea and conform to the sqlite model protocol and we define two properties an id that is of type uh, optional int that is going to be our database uh, id for an idea and then also a description right description of type string and that is it uh, now we can go to configure and down here 
uh, make our project or actually our database um, aware of our final class idea and create a table based on that class, right? How to do that? Basically, same approach as here, we are creating a data, um, a variable called migrations, and that is going to be a migration config, right? And then migration, what are we doing here? We're adding something. So migrations.add, we are adding a migration and model, like something that conforms to migration and model to um, a database identifier, SQLite. So what we're going to do is idea.self, right? This is the class we want to add for our SQLite. And it, all, it will complain because idea is conforming to model. Yes, this protocol is conforming to an underscore SQLite protocol. And this underscore SQLite model protocol is conforming to model. So yeah, we are, the idea is conforming to model but we're not conforming to migration and that is simply solved by extending our idea and conforming to migration and now uh, this one should not complain anymore that it's ambiguous and we can continue and make our services register the migrations now when we run that we will, we will have our project configured with a database. We have also added a table to it based on our final class idea with two columns, ID and description. But we don't see anything and I don't want to leave you without having you something to look at. And so let's create a new route. Let's delete all of them inside here. We run the project and refresh the page here to see, well, it's not found. What we can do is we can define a new route uh, and then say, Let's call it, let's just use the index root, right? And we get the request passed in here and how to query a table in our database actually. So if you want to query a table, then you use the class that you used to actually create that table, right? We use idea to create a table that is an idea table with all its properties. And then we are using idea to call query on it and then pass in the request to tell that the query should be executed on that request, which is our worker. It's actually just a, a worker that will go and execute your, uh, your query. And what, what query do we want to execute? Well, we want actually to select all the ideas we have in our database, which are none, but then we have an empty array, right? And then return that. So we just have a shorthand function called all. We can return that and this is this will go and throw, not throw, but um, Excode will complain about the return because, and it will not compile because um, what it's trying to do here is converting our array or actually the result type of this one is a future array of idea and it's going to, or it's trying to convert it to JSON, but in order to be able to convert to JSON, our idea model or uh, class, sorry, class has to conform to content, which is, which it's not. And that's why it's complaining here because it's like, yeah, I'm returning an array, future array of idea, but, and it's trying to convert it to JSON, but then it sees, well, it's not conforming to content. Uh, I cannot convert the value, whatever, um, event loop, future array of idea to closure type underscore, very descriptive, not. <laughs> uh, you just have to, by experience, know what the error here is, which is simply not this one. Extension idea is missing the conformance to content. That, it's, that is all it needs. Now we can run the project and uh, we still see some, oh, content, yeah, content is not defined because it's inside Vapor. We have to import Vapor. So we have access to content and now it runs. And now we can actually inside here refresh and see an empty array. And that is actually a success because the M this empty array is based on our database query, which means we have successfully set up a database, we have successfully created a table, and we have successfully queried that table and returned all the ideas we have, which are none by now. But we will, uh, of course, cover more uh, query 
query executions in the future episodes. So if you don't want to miss out on them, hit subscribe. If that video was of any help for you, you can help me out by hitting like and also leave a comment in the comment section if you want more explanation on some certain topics or some things that you definitely want me to cover in the future episodes. Also, check out the description box for my Patreon link to support me doing YouTube full time and also to download every source code of every video that I do and to find me on social media. I hope you have a great one. See you in the next one. Bye.